Hi there, so I thought I would do a separate water bath canning how-to video. I do have some other how to make jams, so blueberry, strawberry, peach, I do some marmalade as well, so I'll put links on the screen now and you can have a look at those if you're interested in making any of those. And they do include this sort of water bath canning stuff, but I thought I'd just do a separate one as well to kind of do a little bit more detail hopefully or just make it a little bit clearer if possible if it's your first time using a water bath canner. So this giant metal thing here is an enameled water bath canner. This one is a granite wear one that I bought. It comes with a lid and that rack that you see. The rack lifts out of the water and it just hangs over the edge like this so you can easily put your jars into it and then you can also easily lower them obviously using two hands, not just one. Uh, and then another little kit that I have that has the rest of the stuff that I've purchased separately is a little preserving kit and it's got, these will help you tighten the, the band onto your jar. This is a jar lifting tongs, so those wrap over the top of the jar to help you lift it in and out of the water because the water is obviously boiling and too hot to touch. You've got your funnel for filling your jars. You've got some tongs for picking things up if need be. And this little guy has a magnet on the bottom and that's for picking up your lids out of your warm water. So that's sort of the basic equipment that I use. I've also got jars and bands and lids. I also usually have a pot of water in the background which is hot water which is just over there off to the side. So the first thing that I do is I wash all of my jars in hot soapy water. So I've already done that and they're just off to the side so these have all been washed in just hot, hot soapy water and that's all you need to do to clean them. The other part that you've got that uh, is clean but you don't need to do anything with are the bands so those will go those will go on the top of the jars. Sorry there you go. And then the last thing that you need for that part are lids. Now I'm using ball preserving jars because that's what I have access to and every time you preserve something you need to use a new lid. So you can reuse your jars, you can reuse your bands around the top but you need to have a new lid each time and the reason for that is to make sure that you've got a nice tight tight seal. So once you've used this this little rubber seal around the edge, that's it. It's sort of a, a one-time use. So even if you seal one of these, process it, do all your stuff, and let's say it doesn't seal in, seal in the end, and it, it makes a little noise when you press the top, and you need to process the jar again, you're going to have to use a new lid again. So that just means that these are one-time use only. And with these, the ball brand in particular are great because the rubber around the outside doesn't need to be pre sort of heated or warmed. Uh, some of the other brands, this little rubber around the edge, it's recommended that you put it into some hot water and not boiling, just hot to loosen that up so that it gets a really good seal with the jar when you go to process them. Now I do put them in some warm water just so that it loosens them a little bit but with this ball brand in particular they say that they that's not necessary which is quite cool. So those will just sit in some warm sort of hot tap water not boiling or anything like that until I'm ready to use them but I tend to put that in um, while my once my jam starts boiling and I'm cooking my jam and that sort of thing I'll get that right I'll get these going. So those are my different bits. I've got the jar side and I've got the canner side. So I'll take all of this stuff off of here, move that out of the way. Uh, the other thing you're going to need, obviously, is a ladle for ladling your jam or marmalade or whatever you're preserving into your jars. So what I'm going to do is I am going to put my jars into my water bath canner. This is how I do it. So I'm going to turn this on high because it's a large volume. This is, I think, about 21 quart. Um, water bath canner. I'll put a link for the product below if you are interested in one of these. So I'm just going to lift the rack out. And 
And I'm going to grab my jars and I'm just going to pop them all in here and I'm actually going to lay them down if they all fit. So you want to keep your jars hot so that when you put your hot jam or whatever into the jars, they don't break. And this just keeps them, this is going to keep the sterilization on them. So I'm actually going to bring my water bath canner to a very gentle sort of simmer, not a boil or anything like that, just simmer. And once it gets to that point, I'm just going to keep these hot in the water ready to go. And that's all you really need to do. And as they're not going to all fit lined down, I'm going to stand them up. But I'm going to lower these in. And I just want to make sure that they all have water in them. That there's no air bubbles or anything. And I think we look all good. So I'm just, it's got the stove's on high, so I'm just going to do that, and I'll just put the, actually I might not even put the lid on, because I don't want it to boil really, I just want it to come to a little simmer, and then I'm going to turn it down and just keep the water hot and the jars hot, so that you can put your hot liquor mixture, whatever you're making, into your jars and ready to preserve. So that's all I'm doing with that, and my little pot of hot water back here, so I'm doing 10 jars for this recipe. These little boxes come in 12s, 12s, <laughs> so um, I'm going to take two out and I can hang on to those uh, and then I'm just going to plunk the rest of them in here. There we go. And that's just ha hot tap water. And then off to the side that you can't see, I've got all of my bands ready to go when I need them. So that is all I need to do to get my jars ready for water bath canning. So now I'll come back. I'm going to go ahead and make my jam. And again, uh, pop the links below and on the page just now. So I'm making some blueberry this time, but I've also got a strawberry and a peach jam recipe and a marmalade recipe if you're interested. So you can have a look at those as well. But that's all I need to do with these for now. I need to make my jam next, and then I'll come back and show you how to fill them with the hot jam and process them in your water bath canner. So that's it for now, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've finished making my uh, blueberry jam that I need to can. And so now I'm going to carefully, because this is still very hot, uh, and using two gloves or oven mitts is probably a better idea. I'm just going to lift this out so that I can reach my jars that I've had sterilizing and staying hot. And so those are ready to go. And so now all I need to do is take each out. So I'm going to use my jar lifting tongs for that. So we're just going to do that. And these are nice and hot, so we're going to be careful, but set them out. Now I've kind of set this up a little bit strangely. I've got my chopping board over here on the stove. Normally I would move all of this onto my counter, uh, but I think you get a better view here if I do it here so that you can kind of see all of the jars coming out. So let me get all of those out of the water bath. And of course, you're dumping out all of the water carefully. There we go. So you can just see off in the corner there that I've got my jars in there, hot water, ready to go. I've got my um, funnel and I've got my ladle ready to go as well. So I'm going to pop that there. And then I've got my little magnet. Now again, you don't, I mean, these things are all nice to have. So having a funnel is very useful so that you don't make quite as much of a mess. So. Uh, you need to fill your jars, so let me do that. So this is my hot blueberry mixture. So you want to fill these almost all the way to the top, but you want to leave whatever your recipe calls for. So for me, my blueberry jam needs a quarter of an inch headspace. 
And so this is very hot, but I'm going to try here to pick it up. So you just want a quarter of an inch from the top, and that is your head space, and that is a very hot jar. So for me, when I'm looking at the front of my jar, it's just below that first part of the screw, and I know that that is a quarter of an inch, and that's what this recipe calls for. So that is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to fill all of these, leaving a quarter of an inch head space at the top. Okay, so I've got them all filled. This one was a little bit short on being full. So this is going to be one. I'm going to process that one anyway, but I'm going to put this one into the fridge. So you really do want to make sure they're all full. And if you're like me and you've managed to fill one a little too full, I'm just going to donate some of that one into this one. That looks much better. Okay, so your recipe may also call for you to run a skewer or there are little tools that you can run around the outside and that will release any bubbles that you have. There are certain jams that tend to get more bubbles than others. So if your recipe does call for that, you just run that around a couple times around the inside of the jar and that releases kind of any air bubbles and that will affect the the space on the top so you need to make sure that you do that if your recipe calls for it. The other thing that you need to do is you need to make sure at this point that the ring on the top where your lid is going to seal is clean. So these are quite messy because I did this in a sort of quite awkward way. So I'm going to grab a damp paper towel you can use a damp cloth as well. So I've just got a damp paper towel and I'm just going to very carefully run it around the top of each of the jars to make sure that they are nice and clean and I'm going to get a good seal. Because this is definitely something that will affect your seal when you can them. And this one is really messy. Okay, so I've now got all of those cleaned up, and I'm going to use my little magnet, and I'm going to actually bring this over here, and then I'm going to use my magnet to pick up my lids, and then I'm just going to gently set them on top of each of the jars. There we go. And now I'm going to attach all of my bands to the top. And when you do this, if this is too hot to hold the jar because it's got hot, it's hot and it's got your hot jam, you can use those tongs that we had. These little gripper tongs, so they would just go around the outside so that you can hold this. Your band isn't hot and you're only going to do it till it's finger tight. So I'm not going to crank it on there or anything like that, just finger tight. And then you would move to the next one and grab your next band. Make sure it's going on level. And then just finger tight again. Just like that. So I'm going to go ahead and put all of my bands on. Okay, so now that we've got all of our lids on, we're going to pop them back into our water bath. So let me tip up again so you can see that. There we go. So again, you can use the jar lifting tongs for this as well. If these are too hot, but I find by the rim, if I'm just holding them on the rim, then I'm okay. And because I've got the rack out of the water, it makes it very easy 
to just set all of these on top of it. So if you don't have a water bath canner, you can easily use a large stock pot. You just want to make sure that these jars aren't sat right on the bottom. So that's what this rack does. So something that you can do is either put a cooling rack that you would use for cooling a cake or something baked on. You could use something like that to make sure that they don't sit on the bottom. Or something that is also popular is if you've got some extra bands that you've used, if you just tie a bunch of those together, then those will sit on the bottom and they'll still let the heat obviously come through, but it'll keep the jars off of the bottom. So now that I've done this, I'm going to carefully lower them into the water. Like that. And you want to make sure that you have one to two inches of water above your lids so that they can be processed properly. I'm going to pop my lid on at this point. And I'm going to turn my stove back onto high. So normally I would leave that just sort of going once I took the hot jars out, but it was making a lot of noise. So uh, I'm going to turn it back on now. So now what I need to do is I need to bring this to a boil. Once it's started boiling, I can then start timing it. And processing times are different for each of your jams and jellies or any of your recipes, whatever you happen to be preserving. For this recipe, it's going to be 10 minutes. So once it comes to a full boil, that's when I can start timing. I'll time 10 minutes and then I'll come back and take them out and I'll show you what you do next with your water bath canning process. Okay, so my jars have been processing for the 10 minutes that my recipe called for. I'm turning off the heat. I'm going to take the lid off of my pan and move that aside. So I'm just going to let these cool down just like this for a few minutes, like five minutes or so. And then we're going to lift them out and transfer them over. So I've got my chopping board just here and just a tea towel. So if you're not going to use a chopping board or anything like that, then make sure you use the tea towel because you want to make sure that there's no shock. So these are coming from boiling water and you don't want to put them on anything cold that might shock them and that would break the jars. So you want to just make sure that you've got something safe. So I tend to put them on my chopping board on, a, on top of a tea towel as well because they're usually a little bit just wet from the water. So that works really well anyway. So they've sort of stopped bubbling. I'm going to grab my oven mitts again since the steam is still very hot. And without getting these in the water, I'm going to grab my little handles here and just take those out. Now that's what I find really great about having the actual canner, the rack and the handles, and then they're easier to get at from this point. So now you want to transfer them onto your place where you're going to cool them. And as they cool, this is when they seal. So you will hear pops and that is the lid being sucked down like a little vacuum as it cools. So you want to hear that so that's what you're going to be listening to or for. Ooh, there's one. And gently tip them. Don't turn them upside down or anything but I tip them gently to get the water off. So those little pops you're hearing are the lid sealing. So you're going to try and listen for however many jars you made. And you're going to leave these to cool for 12 to 24 hours. So you can hear, hopefully you can hear all those little pops and stuff. Those are my lid sealing. And you're going to leave them for 12 to 24 hours. And after that, that's when you can check to see if they're sealed. So you got to give them a fair chance to seal. A lot of times I usually hear pops within the first 5 to 10 minutes. You can hear them all. 
five to ten minutes of taking them out, but they could take longer, so we'll check them after the 12 to 24 hours to make sure that they have sealed. So just transferring these carefully all over. And these guys have sort of moved a little bit. Try not to tip them over. Yo, and my odd number for the rows that I have. All right, so 12 to 24 hours just like this, and then we'll come back and I will show you how to check to make sure that they've all sealed, and we'll go through what you do if they haven't sealed. So I will see you in 12 hours. Okay, so I've let my jam rest now for 12 hours, so I'm gonna check and see if all of my jars have sealed and all I'm going to do is just gently press down on the top of each of the jars so no noises so if I were to press down and it goes like click click or bup bup then that means that the jar hasn't sealed so that noise you can sort of if you click a lid of a jar or something that you have already opened that noise you don't want to hear that so if I press on all of these then they're all fine and they're all sealed. Now, you may also notice that some of the bands are loose, and that's because the seal is with the lid, it's not with the band. So you can actually take the lid, the bands off, and you could store it just like that. That is sealed on its own, so there's no problems there. But I just usually, I don't usually tighten these any further, I just leave them with them so that I know I've got the bands ready to go if I'm giving these as gifts or not. So that's how you would check to see if your processing worked. If it didn't and you did hear a noise when you press that, you have two options. So you can either open that jar and eat it right away, keep it in the fridge, eat it like a normal jar that you've opened, or you can process it again. As I said before, you'll need a new lid. So not a new band or jar or anything, you just need to put a new lid on top of it and pop it back into your water bath again and process again for 10 minutes or whatever your recipe calls for once the water bath has returned to a boil. So that is sort of the separate rundown of how to use a water bath canner. I hope all of that made sense. If you've got any questions, pop those below and I'll get back to you with some answers. And if you enjoyed my video, please do give me a thumbs up. And, and please subscribe to see what else I'm up to. I will post after this links to my jam recipes once again if you wanted to have a look at any of those. Thanks again for watching.